Welcome to Open House. My name is Shane Gannon, and I'm the Associate Dean here in the Faculty of Arts. Today, while I have you, I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, I want to talk about the different majors that we offer here in the Faculty of Arts. Second, I want to discuss some of the learning opportunities that you'll have outside of your major. You see, most of your degree will be constituted through the major courses you take. However, there are courses outside of your major you can take. I want to talk to you a little bit about them and the opportunities that they represent. Finally, I want to provide a brief overview of career opportunities that you'd have if you were to enroll in a Bachelor of Arts at Mount Royal University. Before I introduce these topics, though, I'd like to talk briefly about what we teach here in the Faculty of Arts. You see, some confuse us with fine arts. Now, we don't teach things like music, theater, or any of the other related disciplines. Rather, we teach something very different. So the faculty largely gets its name from the degree we offer, the Bachelor of Arts. So rather than fine arts, we offer Bachelor of Arts degree with several majors. One can think about our majors as being either social sciences or humanities. So the social sciences, we have anthropology, uh, uh, policy studies, sociology, and psychology. Humanities, on the other hand, we have uh, majors such as English and history. To provide an overview of the different majors that one can take with a Bachelor of Arts, I want to turn to my colleagues in the specific areas who can speak to this particular factor. Hi, my name is Dr. Rebecca Gilmore, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at Mount Royal University. And I myself am an anthropologist, which means I specialize in the study of humans, humanity, and specifically of culture. So within this broader of umbrella of anthropology, we have many different subfields. We have cultural anthropologists that work living humans, sometimes on projects about medicine or um, health, and sometimes on nutrition, on religion as well. Other anthropologists study linguistics or language. Others are archaeologists, which means that they excavate or analyze evidence for people in the past. And still others are biological anthropologists, and these will include primatologists who study modern human relatives, as well as paleoanthropologists who study our evolutionary ancestors, and bioarchaeologists like myself who focus on the analysis of human remains from archaeological contexts. So at MRU, one of the things we pride ourselves on is this really applied, hands-on education in smaller groups whenever possible. And so, especially in archaeology and in biological anthropology, students will have a chance to actually handle and analyze uh, remains from real archaeological sites, as well as even human remains. So students in their labs will work with pottery, they'll work with uh, faunal or animal remains, they'll work with uh, lithics or stone tools, as well as human bone and teeth, uh, to really get a full and applied understanding of how anthropologists in these subfields may actually do their job. So once they get their education, once a student gets an education in anthropology, they can enter into a really wide variety of different types of careers. And I've known some anthropology undergraduates to move into fields like marketing and advertising, as well as HR, because they're really good at communicating with people, as well as understanding what people need, because they have this, this really great underpinning knowledge in culture and in human diversity and human behavior. Some anthropologists have even gone on to work for Apple and NASA, for example, and others work in uh, sectors like public health and uh, work towards uh, improving uh, access to certain nutritional resources as well as access to different types of healthcare. So other anthropologists, the archaeologists, can actually work in archaeology as well. And prior to any construction project, there needs to be an archaeological survey done in Alberta and across Canada. So every time a foundation is built or a road is laid or a pipeline is dug, you need an archaeologist out there to do that survey and sometimes even to do the excavation in advance. So our graduates have a really broad choice of careers open to them. 
Other, uh, other graduates may choose to go on to different types of professional schools, maybe law school, and still others go on to do graduate education, maybe a master's or a PhD in anthropology or a related field. So really the opportunities are endless and we hope to see you soon at MRU in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. I use my English degree every day in every part of my job. In the Department of English Languages and Cultures, students start with art. Art that comes in words, in novels, poetry, spoken word performances, graphic novels and plays. You can study children's literature, science fiction and fantasy, literature written in England's Middle Ages or in Canada just last year. You can study post-colonial, African, and indigenous literatures, writing that looks under the hood of Western civilization to understand its history. Some courses teach how to become a creative writer yourself, of fiction, poetry, stage plays, or screenplays. Or you can learn technical writing and editing, skills that are essential in a wide range of careers. Film studies lives here too. Courses that show how cinema both reflects and affects the world around us. And languages get taught here as well. There is both a French and a Spanish minor, as well as credit courses in Chinese, Japanese, and Italian. Students with an English degree can translate their skills into many kinds of careers in governmental or arts administration, jobs in a wide array of nonprofit organizations, careers in publishing, law, web content management, freelance writing, and in a number of industries where your degree may lead to some original entrepreneurial thinking. When I graduated, I was actually offered two positions. My full title is Chief Executive Officer of my tea company, and we're in Sobeys and Safeways across Alberta, but our tea is carried nationally. And it was actually born out of an Indigenous literatures class uh, led by Dr. Renee Watchman. My degree has been the biggest and most empowering gift. Employers are not just looking for narrow technical skills, they actually look for a broader set of skills and capacities, including the ability to solve problems and adapt to change, skills like communication, leadership, and teamwork. What you learn to do in an English degree is transferable and adaptable to changing market conditions. You take your abilities to where you want to take them. I always tell people that the English program at MRU is like being at Hogwarts. There's like so much support. Instructors in the Department of English Languages and Cultures bring a unique set of research interests to our classrooms and we put them to work to give students valuable skills along with insight into the human condition. We're so happy that you could join us. A few of the history professors and a current history student have gathered together and we're going to talk you through some of the parts of our program. Hi there, my name is Zoe. Um, I'm completing my third year in the history program at Mount Royal. And what stuck out the most for me is the support that I've received from my professors. Whether I've needed help understanding an assignment, a topic in class, or really anything, they've always gone over and above to make time for me. Um, I found that the courses are very interactive and engaging because history isn't meant to just be reciting dates from a textbook. History is dynamic and hands-on, and I think that the, the small class sizes have really allowed for the courses to reflect this. So whether it be field study or getting to explore the Mount Royal archives and getting to hold an actual page from medieval illuminated manuscripts, um, I just, I feel very fortunate that my career in history has got to begin at Mount Royal. Hello, my name is Kurt Niergarth and I teach Canadian history. But when I was an undergrad in history, the number one question I got asked by family and friends was, what are you going to do with your history degree? The truth at the time was I wasn't sure, but I used to answer the most obvious possibilities. I'd say, oh, well, I'll be a teacher or a lawyer. If you check out this link on our website, you'll see that while some of our alumni have gone on to be teachers and lawyers, they are making a mark in a diversity of fields in both the public and the corporate sectors. If you want the national picture, we also have a link on our website to a page put together by the Canadian Historical Association that features history graduates across the country working in uh, almost any field you can imagine. From judges to mayors to CEOs, 
The skills that a history program develops, research, communication, critical thinking, self-motivation, these are skills in demand, and a degree in history can open many doors to fulfilling careers. History at MRU is about so much more than lecture. We offer international and domestic field schools, role-playing exercises, work placements at historical organizations, course-based projects such as a virtual tour of medieval Paris, students work as research assistants. If you come to Mount Royal for History, you'll find a varied, interesting, and challenging program. For students who wish to apply to graduate school or work in the field of history or are simply looking for an intellectual challenge, uh, the Honors Program provides an opportunity to engage in a historical research project and work closely with a member of our faculty. The Honors Project helps students develop their analytical research and writing skills and prepares them for further study and work in the field. I'm Dr. Emily Hutchison and I teach the Ancient and Medieval Offerings in our program. We have a variety of other courses ranging from ancient history all the way to the 20th century and you can choose to focus on specific geographical areas such as the Middle East, Canada, the US, Europe or Latin America and we have quite a few Indigenous history courses as well that you can pair with other courses in Indigenous studies. Some of our offerings focus on particular historical events like the Holocaust or the American Civil War or the witch hunts, while others are more thematic in form. For example, you can take a number of our different gender and sexuality courses, a course on the body, we have several courses on crime and punishment, and even one on vice, sin, and religion. So really, there are plenty of great courses on our books. Have a look through our course offerings in the Mount Royal University calendar for more information and a brief description. We're looking forward to seeing, seeing you in the future. Hi, my name is Chris Turner. I'm a uh, student at Mount Royal University. I'm a policy studies student. This is our resource room. Why don't you come on in? I hear you're interested in policy studies. I'll introduce you to some students. Hey, Diamond, why don't you tell our new student what your favorite course was? My favorite course was the Moot Court, which was an experiential learning opportunity uh, that I got to practice with during our law and politics course. And how about you, Blake? What's your favorite part of the policy studies program? My favorite part of the program is the sheer diversity of things you cover. You go through politics, policy, and economics, but you can apply it to any issues that you're passionate about. You'll truly be set up for anything post-degree, which is a major benefit, as you're going to discover a ton of new passions along the way. And a big part of that process is the internship. Yeah, so my favorite part of the whole program was the internship. So with the policy studies program, there's an internship component where you do have to go work at an actual workplace. And for me, I worked at a municipal government uh, office writing bylaws for a small town. And it really gave me a chance to really sink my teeth into some actual policy work. Yeah, Keldon's right. The internship is really important, but there's a lot of ways to get involved with your time at Mount Royal. Camille, why don't you talk about the Post Student Society? The Post Student Student Society is an amazing thing to get part of during your very first year here at Mount Royal. We make the fabulous transition from high school to post-secondary education right from the minute you walk right through those doors. Daphne, why don't you talk about the other things you found in this room? As soon as you walk in, everyone greets you with a smiling face. And I think that those connections that you make with your classmates are very beneficial and will benefit you in the long run. Thanks for joining us here in the Policy Studies Room. We hope to see you in the halls next year. See, see you soon. soon! In Policy Studies, you will learn about all the actors in the policy process. Governments, bureaucracies, corporations, interest groups, and the people themselves, public opinion, and how all of these fit into the political, economic, and legal environments that they operate in. Policy lives where all of these things come together. It matters because it's the glue of our lives. All of our political and economic and social systems are all driven by policy. In our program, you'll learn about Canadian politics, Alberta politics, the international system. You'll learn about how politics shapes the economy and the other way around too. And you can finally get to the bottom of how this equalization formula works because there seems to be quite a bit of confusion about that. And you can learn all of this from instructors you get to know pretty well. And alongside students you'll get to know fast because of that shared study space that our students showed you. 
They have so much fun in there, collaborating, networking, debating, and just hanging out. Our classrooms and student spaces are wonderfully collegial places where you can talk about the issues of the day, sometimes debate them, um, when you're looking for an excuse to procrastinate on your schoolwork. And while you're doing all of this, you're learning what some people like to call soft skills, but I don't think they're soft at all. Skills, important practical skills, like research and writing, sharpening your public speaking and presentation skills, expressing yourself logically and persuasively, doing critical analysis and problem solving, and managing projects. I mean, your postgraduate resume pretty much writes itself. Ultimately, policy studies is a great combination of a liberal arts degree and practical experience. And one of the most unique things about a policy studies degree at MRU is our internship that Kelvin mentioned in the video. It has a required, uh, it's a required part of our program and it gives you hands-on policy experience at some pretty interesting places like Global Affairs Canada or Canada Border Services. We even had a student do an internship at the United Nations. Some of our people have gone to Washington one worked for a U.S. Senator. Or, if you want, you can stay closer to home. You could take an internship with the City of Calgary or the Government of Alberta. Maybe you work for an MLA or a nonprofit organization. And the great news is that we provide extensive support to you while you're searching for that perfect internship. The beauty of our policy studies degree, for me, is that you don't have to choose between learning interesting things or preparing for a career. You can do both. Our degree combines all the fascinating subjects that you can explore in a liberal arts degree with experiential learning and policy work. And when you're done, you can do all sorts of stimulating things with your degree. You could be a policy analyst, a trade officer, program manager, research assistant, legislative assistant, or you could do statistical an analysis and so on. Some of our grads have gone on to work in some pretty amazing places like Go Global Affairs Canada, Canada Border Services, the British Consulate, the U.S. State Department working in understanding on solving problems like the refugee crisis, relations between Canada and the United States. Uh, they've worked as ministerial assistants, the government of Alberta, the Alberta Health Services, agricultural departments, the city of Calgary, nonprofit organizations like the Calgary Humane Society, or immigration charities like the Alberta Association of Immigrant Serving Agencies. You could also work in the private sector because after all, every organization has to have policy and do analysis in that area. Some of our grads are particularly interested in some of the subfields we study in policy studies, like economics, political science, and of course policy studies, and they've gone on to do their MA or even PhD in some of those fields. Some go on to do law school, which makes sense because law is, after all, a kind of policy. So the possibilities are endless. Hello all. My name is Dr. Anthony Chaston, and I'm a professor here at Mount Royal in the uh, Department of Psychology. Um, for this video, uh, I couldn't really shoot it on the actual Mount Royal campus, so I thought I'd make us a little bit of a virtual reality mock-up. So, welcome to the Mount Royal Eastgate entrance. So, they asked me to answer three questions in this video, and this is the first one. So, what do students in your program study? Well, I think most people, when they think of psychology, the first thing they usually think about is clinical psychology. So that focuses on uh, assessment and treatment and patient care, which is a huge part of our field. But there's also all kinds of other sub-disciplines within psychology now. So we have things like social psychology and cognitive psychology, personality psychology, developmental psychology, and of course, brain and behavior, you know, neuroscience and neurotransmitters. It makes it all work. So as a psychology major, you would take courses in each of these areas and then be able to focus on the areas of psychology that you find most interesting as you move through the degree. So for example, we have senior courses in things like sports psychology, uh, the psychology of social media, and the psychology of sexuality, plus lots of other interesting ones. Okay, so question number two. Why should I take a psychology degree at Mount Royal University? Well, in today's world, we are surrounded by information about people. For example, companies collect data about their customers. In the clinical field, people collect data about treatments and outcomes. Um, so during your progress through the Mount Royal uh, psychology degree, not only will you learn about our specific topic areas, but we focus on teaching you about how professionals think about these areas. So things like how do we measure human behavior? How do we draw conclusions from that information? And how do we use these conclusions to improve everything from companies to clinical situations? I mean, understanding how data about people is collected and how it's implemented is an immensely powerful skill. And it is a professional skill that you can bring to just about any employment situation. So that brings us to question number three. 
What possible careers could a student look for after graduating with a degree from your program? So a psychology degree isn't designed to train you for just one specific job. The goal of the degree is to help you develop a broad range of professional skills that you can bring to a wide variety of work fields. As you move through the program, you'll learn to read like a professional, to write like a professional, to present like a professional. The goal is to develop a toolbox of transferable skills that you can apply to a wide variety of job situations. By developing those transferable skills, as opposed to training for one specific job, you have the flexibility to take your career in the direction that you want. Our grads work in a huge range of fields from marketing to nonprofit, from clinical to corporate. If you develop a transferable skill set, then you have the power to decide on the direction your career takes. Well, I think my two minutes are up, so hey, maybe I'll see you in class someday. My name's Tom Buchanan. I'm the chair of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology here at Mount Royal. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sociology program. But first, um, what is it that sociology actually is? Well, I like to think about Peter Berger's definition. Sociology is about seeing the general and the particular. We like to think about individual experience as very much a result of our personal choices and agency. Um, but sociologists tend to study how the organization of society, how your family's organized, how your community is organized, how your workplace is organized organized, how that has an impact on individuals. And when we actually group a bunch of individuals together, uh, we can kind of see some trends and patterns that uh, are very predictable. So our faculty members here study a lot of different things. Uh, we like to bring students into our research projects. And so students that come into our program uh, get a lot of research experience with faculty members. Um, particularly, I study uh, inequality uh, in the workplace and in families, mostly along uh, gender lines. So I look at the gender gap in parenting time. Um, why do mothers do so much more parenting than fathers? Uh, and I also look at helicopter parenting. So I've developed a scale of helicopter parenting and I look at the impact on university students uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, but there are lots of different areas of sociology that students uh, can study in our department. What can you do with a sociology degree? Our department takes this question very seriously. We have an initiative called Making the Most of Your Major, where we help students uh, develop, develop their resumes um, and also to network with alumni, other faculty members, advanced students to try to get them prepared for getting out of our program and into the workplace. So our alumni work in a, a lot of different areas. Um, lots of social workers uh, that come out of our program that end up working in areas of youth outreach uh, with uh, families um, in the area of homelessness and immigration. We also have a lot of our alumni working in the area of disability services. We have um, one of our um, students that graduated from our program is working with Calgary Transportation in developing um, initiatives that address um, people with disabilities in the um, public transportation experience. Uh, also, we have uh, student uh, graduates working with a, uh, autistic ad adults and finding uh, life skills and coaching and mentoring in those areas. We also have a really high success rate of our graduates going to uh, further graduate studies um, into research, uh, sometimes at the master's level and sometimes at the PhD level. But if they want to go to graduate school from our program, they've been very successful. We have students that have come out of our program and are successful lawyers. We have uh, students in law school right now that have, that have come out of our sociology program and others that have gone into counseling areas. So there are a lot of different uh, areas, but we have a lot of um, alumni that have been very successful coming out of sociology at Mount Royal. So why should you take sociology at Mount Royal? Well, not only are you going to be successful getting a, a job or going to graduate school, but you also learn how to investigate social issues. And this is very interesting for our graduates. Um, you have an understanding of inequality. You have a great understanding of research methods. 
And also you come out through that understanding. Uh, most of our graduates are very passionate about making a difference and creating uh, solutions in society to make society a better place. Thank you very much for your time and take care. Now that you have an idea of the sorts of things that we talk about within the Faculty of Arts, the different majors that is, I want to talk a little bit about other learning opportunities. You see, when you get your degree, the majority of your courses will be in your major, but you're going to have an opportunity to take other courses outside of your major. As you can see, some of the opportunities we have are internships, specifically in policy studies. These opportunities provide hands-on experience, but it's not limited to just policy studies, nor to the internship. Rather, we have other opportunities for experiential learning, including many field schools. Over the past few years, the Faculty of Arts has offered field schools in areas as diverse as Ghana, Sri Lanka, France, Germany, the, the Czech Republic, Belgium, the DC area of the United States, Hawaii, and perhaps best of all, Southern Alberta, where we have a Treaty 7 field school that looks at indigenous culture within the region. All of our majors also have honors programs. So this is another opportunity for you to explore a specific area in your major really closely. There's also a range of community service learning courses in the Faculty of Arts. Those allow you uh, and allow students an opportunity to engage with the community. There are also opportunities for hands-on experiences, especially in our labs, since a lot of our courses have a lab components. You can find such experiences in anthropology, economics, and psychology. Finally, you'll have the opportunity to be exposed to a variety of other subjects different from your major area of concentration. In the Faculty of Arts, we have many of these areas, which we call minors or minor area of concentrations. To provide an overview of the different minors in the faculty, I'll turn to a colleague who will outline them for us. Hello, my name is Matthew Matapanyani, Associate Professor of Women's and Gender Studies in the Department of Humanities, Faculty of Arts at Mount Royal University. The Faculty of Arts at Mount Royal University includes the Departments of Economics, Justice and Policy Studies, English Languages and Cultures, Humanities, Interior Design, Psychology, and Sociology and Anthropology, and houses the CCDR, Center for Community Disaster Research, a transdisciplinary center for research on natural, social, technological, and economic disasters. We are located in Mokinsis on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy and the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, including the Tsutina, Yahinakota, and Métis Nation Region 3. So why choose the Faculty of Arts at MRU as your academic home? Let's begin with the broader context. The Bachelor of Arts is one of the most relevant and beneficial educational investments one can make to meet the demands of a dynamic, rapidly changing, globalized, and diverse labor market. Universities Canada indicates that 55% of the world's professional leaders are social sciences and humanities graduates across 30 countries and all sectors. Other studies show that arts graduates just a few years into their careers have salaries on par with business degree holders and other professional degrees. Statistics Canada, for instance, indicates that more Canadian-born Bachelor of Arts holders aged 25 to 34 are employed and remain employed for longer periods than those with degrees in other areas. A complementary Canadian study by the Education Policy Research Initiative at the University of Ottawa on earnings among graduates found that students in the humanities and social sciences have greater stability with earnings that rise steadily rather than being subjected to the boom and bust cycles experienced by colleagues in engineering and computer science. 
Contemporary employers seek candidates with complex problem solving abilities, knowledgeable in key ethical issues and public debates pertaining to their field, people who have direct experiences with community engagement and outreach, who hold developed civic knowledge and acumen. They look for critical thinking and analytic reasoning, strong written and communication, as well as conflict resolution capabilities in the context of diverse workplaces. These skills, alongside an adeptness with equity policy and associated methods of implementation, as is provided in women's and gender studies training, are vital and highly sought skills in the contemporary workforce, clearly distinguishing arts graduates in the range of their professional and other pursuits. It's important to note that while a degree in the arts makes a strong foundation for further graduate studies and provides highly sought transferable labor market skills, it offers much more than this. It's advantageously offering the skills of observation, discernment, situational awareness, and critique that are all key to living a well-rounded and well-considered life. Through the Bachelor of Arts at Mount Royal University, students gain all of these skills and training, along with the opportunity to strengthen them by way of unique offerings, such as applied service learning opportunities, local and international field schools, research and co-publication with professors, and via MRU's membership in the Council on Undergraduate Research also through undergraduate academic journals, which provide opportunities to engage multiple aspects of the research and publication process, from submitting scholarly work for publication to serving on the editorial teams. Undergraduate academic journals in the Faculty of Arts at MRU, for instance, include Affectus, Undergraduate Journal of Philosophy and Theory, the Behavioral Sciences Undergraduate Journal, experiences in Spanish-English translation, and the Mount Royal Undergraduate Humanities Review. Our professors are recognized innovators in teaching and research and reputable grants and awards holders in their scholarly and pedagogical work. The high demand skills gained through an arts degree, among them writing and communication, critical thinking and analysis, research engagement and dissemination, cross-cultural literacy and conflict resolution, community engagement and outreach, all create an expansive academic formation rather than a narrow one, multiplying rather than limiting career options and choices. So please visit our Faculty of Arts website. Uh, we are here to connect with you and help you navigate the wide terrain of possibilities. Read about us and get in touch. And we look forward to meeting you and to accompanying you on your academic journey. I think one of the questions we're asked most often in the Faculty of Arts is what do you do with a Bachelor of Arts degree? Unlike a degree such as nursing, which after graduation, one becomes a nurse, there's not a specific job that awaits you once you leave Mount Royal. In other words, you will not exit for a specific job with a Bachelor of Arts, such as sociologist. Rather, you're provided with a variety of important skills that open the doors to a diversity of careers. This allows folks to pivot. This allows people to take those skills and apply them to novel and potentially unanticipated areas. So during a pandemic, for example, someone with a Bachelor of Arts would be given the diversity, the diverse skills, but also the flexibility to do a range of occupations. That really is one of the benefits of a Bachelor of Arts degree. To outline how a Bachelor of Arts degree prepares you for a career, I turn to an associate to look at the importance of career training at Mount Royal University. Any university arts degree will involve choosing a major. A major announces your post-secondary focus to the world, your academic identity. But what about the courses you take that are not directly related to your major? 
Most arts programs allow you to take about 14 electives, and those courses make for a well-rounded degree experience overall. But what if you planned out and declared a minor area of concentration? What if you customized your degree so your major and your minor complemented one another? Since a designation for a minor area of focus would appear on your transcripts, you could announce to future employers that during your degree, you had a plan all along for when you entered the workforce. If you go to the Faculty of Arts main page and look to the left to see the lists of our majors and our minors, you will see the names of a substantial number of minors offered here at Mount Royal. Let's say you were a history major interested in working in government one day. A minor in Canadian studies could strengthen your understanding of the society our governments serve. Or maybe you're a psychology major with an interest in language disorders. A minor in linguistics might be the perfect add-on. If you majored in sociology and wanted to work one day for environmental agencies or nonprofits, then Mount Royal's new environmental humanities minor would be a boost to your qualifications. Most minors will require that you take seven or eight courses. When planning a minor, check early with an advisor so you can ensure that you can meet all the requirements before graduation. Keep in mind that most courses at the 3000 and 4000 level have prerequisites, so students should consider those when selecting their 1000 and 2000 level courses. Students must declare their intention to complete a minor. The form for doing so is available at the Office of the Registrar. Let's consider a few more examples of how you can customize your degree with a minor. If you are an anthropology major who has heard that corporations value the degree when trying to understand the needs of consumers, then a minor in finance and economics would nicely round out your degree. If you took a policy studies major and you wanted to work in governmental and community relations, a minor in indigenous studies might enhance your job prospects. If you did a Bachelor of Interior Design, you might want to round off your aesthetic education with an art history minor. Plan ahead and don't hesitate to customize to get the most out of your degree. I hope that this overview provides you with the information to help you make the most informed choice about where to attend post-secondary. I really do hope that the Faculty of Arts is a destination for you, especially at Mount Royal University. Thank you for coming to this session, and I hope to see you here next year. Bye for now.